welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at how to make a type of diverging plot or a plot that shows deviation that's known as a diverging stacked bar chart. It's a fairly complex plot, but we have all the tools we need to make this because essentially we're going to make a stacked bar chart, which we've already seen how to do, and then we're going to make it diverging by placing two examples of this stacked bar chart back to back. We've seen both of these separately, so now we're just going to put them together. And I think a nice data set for this would be the survey results that we just recently had for this class, where I ask you for your feedback on the various aspects. If we go to the data, here's what we see. This is the exported version of these questions, worked up just a little bit. What I've done is I've collected the responses for the first eight questions where I ask you to strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree on several different aspects of this course. And that is collected over here. So I have questions one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree, and I have the relative fractions of these listed in here. I could use this to make a bar chart. We know, however, that I wanna make a stacked bar chart. And so one of the things I'm going to need to do is also collect this information. This is the sort of data that I would use if I wanted to have a regular bar chart. But that's not what we want. We want a stacked bar chart. And so let's just go ahead and select a few of these, say insert, and work up the data how we're gonna need it to be. Let's say question number. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then this is actually like what the question is, essentially, which maybe we can use as labels. And then what I want is strongly plus agree. One thing I could do is also just take this same data that I have here. There's five rows, so one, two, three, four, four, five, let's just make six, say insert. I could take this, say copy, and then paste special, transposed, and now paste special values, copy this, paste special, transposed. So I've pasted just the values so that I don't have any problems with formulas. And now I have just those numbers. And it's a little bit easier now to add these two together and go straight down. So now basically this becomes the sum of these two right here. And now if I just go ahead and copy this and go straight down, I will have the sum of these two columns here. I already have the data agree, so I don't need to repeat that. All I need is maybe the strongly disagree plus disagree, but you can see that nobody strongly disagreed with anything, and so I actually don't need to make that column. And at this point, we are actually done. So I'm gonna say save as, because I wanna put this in a different folder, and now I will just call this diverging data survey, just so I remember what it is. Then if I go into views, we are prepared to make this plot. Let's go ahead and load this data and load the data. Say import, close. I have a lot of data now because there's so many different columns, but that's okay. I know which data I really want. And so let's just start making this. What I would like to have is a stacked bar chart. And we know the way to do that is just to have a graph where I have two different bars. The one on the bottom will be the longer bar, the one on the top will be the shorter bar because views writes what's on top, on top. And so this is the longer bar. What the lengths I would like for that to be would be the strongly plus agree. Strongly plus agree. I don't really want this to be vertical, so let's go ahead and change this to horizontal. And then I want the same thing for bar two, except now all I need is just the 
agree part. And that should also be horizontal. And now you can see that I have a plot where I have stacked bar charts on top of each other. They run from not zero to one, so that's already a mistake. This x-axis, which was auto, should be zero. And then the max should be, let's say one, if we keep this in terms of fraction. However, I think a lot of times we wanna think in terms of percentage. And so let's go ahead and scale this by 100, which means that the scale should go out to 100. And now I have the same data just reported as percentage. And so I have agree plus strongly agree shown here. Now I need the other side of this, which is to have the disagree. Before I do that, let's just change a little bit of formatting here so that we have something that looks reasonable to me. Let's go in and say for the bar that I, don't, that I want this hidden. And now I don't have a line around that bar. I also don't want a line on this bar and I could go in and do the same. But one thing um, I can do now is that I can just say, that's really what I want as the default style. And so it'll copy that over to this bar. I think what we could do is have like, this is the best we could possibly have is strongly agree. And this is the worst. And so let's start here with thinking about the color of that bar. I would say that something that might be nice is a darkish blue followed by a light blue. So we could do blueberry and then aqua perhaps. So let's set this to blueberry. Mm, do not like. Let's set this to midnight. And then let's set this to a slightly lighter color. So instead of midnight, maybe ocean. Let's see how I like that. It looks okay. It's not great. How about aqua? That's a little bit better maybe. You might think that you would want to have these two reversed. I don't know that, you know, this is sort of a element of style. I would probably play with these a little bit more, but at least for right now, I can see the difference between the two. And that's probably good enough for us right now. I'm going to call this graph positive. I'm going to call this agree. And then I am also going to call this graph just strongly agree because that's what we're actually showing with it, even though it's covered up, right? We know that this is a bar. If I moved it to the top, that's all we would see. It's a long bar that's covered up by these shorter bars. What I want now is something that goes the other way that shows me the disagree. We saw how to do that before. And the way to do this is to create a grid. I'm actually going to just make a whole new page so that we can keep this and come back and look at it if we want to. So let's just make a new page. Let's make it a grid. Let's say that all we're really going to want is two columns in one row. And then we want this in here. And then this could be the negative one. Let's change the order and call this negative. I don't need two bars anymore. And so I'm just going to delete this and I'm going to call this disagree. Then I need to change its color to be something that is reddish. And so let's go back and maybe this maraschino would work. Yeah, it's gonna stand out, that's nice. Maybe I'm more concerned about the people that disagree than agree, because it tells me where I might wanna focus my efforts in changing things. Of course, I also need then to change this. And so let's call this disagree. And you can see that the bars are generally shorter. That's probably a good sign for this course, I guess. I can have the x-axis run from zero to 100 because I copied and pasted it. It does. That's pretty nice. I need the bars to run the other direction, which means I need to take the minimum and place it over here, which is one, and take the maximum, which is at one, and place it at zero. So let's just go min position one, max position zero. That's how I change the direction that these run. Okay, and then the y. I could change the axis position to one, and now it has flipped to the other side. I'm actually gonna just get rid of this once I smash everything together, because I want this abutted directly on that, 
And so let's go ahead and do that right now. Again, there are many different ways to do this. We could control all the margins individually, but let's just zero everything. And that changes inside of here, the margins for each one of these graphs, these graph widgets to be all zero. And that puts them directly back to back. Now, in this case, I'm not gonna want, I think, any line. So I'm just gonna say hide. And then I'm also gonna say hide on this plot here. And that will leave me something like this where I'm running right up the middle and I have positive and negative. And I could even then retitle this if I want. We can do the same tricks we've seen before where I could say this is my positive sentiment and the other is my negative sentiment. And so let's keep these as percentages. They probably don't need to have all these tick marks. So let's go ahead and change that real quick to something like 12. That'll give us one every 10. I probably don't even like that. I would change this if it were me to three. So I have zero, 50, 100, that's probably good enough. And then I don't need these every 10, although I guess we could have it. If it were me, I'd probably change this to six so that I get them at the 25s. And so now I can see sort of the quarter percentages, something like that. I think that looks reasonable to me. Again, if I wanna apply it over here, I could go in and do that, but I could also just say that I want to use this as the default style, and that will change the other axis right away. Okay, what's left is to maybe label each one of these so I know what the question was. I want the labels in this negative graph. What I would like to do is just use the automatic labeling wherein I have these different questions, which I can use as the label to indicate what those labels are. And then I can use the question number here to place them along the Y axis. What I'm missing is the X axis. Where should I put them if I point to columns to place them in a particular place? Well, I could think about wanting them to all be aligned nicely in a row and I don't want them overlapping with any of this data. So let's just pick the longest segment and have that be our limit or our place to align them. If I look here, I can see that it's question six that has the most negative sentiment and that's 11% or 0.11. So let's just make a new column called X position and let's have this be 0.15. So we have a little bit of an offset. Then I'll go in and I'll just double click. I'll do that, I'll say save. I will go back to views. I will refresh this data so that when I look at the data, I now have something called X position. And then I can go in and I can say, I want my labels to be the questions, which is gonna give me all the text. I would like the X position to be this X position. And then I would like the Y positions to be the question number. You can only see one of these, why is that is? And it's not even at 0.15. And the reason is that we have yet to change this position mode to axes. It's on relative. And so we start at question one, which is the very top question two, then would be like somewhere way above this. So let's just go to axes. Now you can see I have all these questions. They read the wrong way or maybe the, the right way, but I want them to be not aligned so that they go this direction. So I go to formatting for the label and I just say, let's make this horizontal alignment right. I would like it also to be centered on the bar. So let's just go center for the vertical alignment. And now look at this. I have looking forward to class, skills have improved and class critiquing is useful and so on. I have one problem, which is that this does not fit. Maybe I could just say connect data and design. And let's see if that fits. So I just hit save and then refresh. And now that looks a little bit better connect data and design. And if you wanted to have it be some sort of uh, assertion or something that's a bit more prob um, positive, I can say can connect. And I think there was room for that, but let's find out. Can connect data and design. Perfect. These are not the order that I asked the questions in, or at least reading top to bottom. So this is can connect data and design. Lectures are useful. One, two, three. We know how to 
change this order, which is basically, again, to swap the min and the max. So the min position is going to be 1, the max position is going to be 0, and then if I swap this y to do the same, this is 1, that is 0. Now they read top to bottom in the order that you filled out these questions. This is black and that's gray. That is not great for consistency, so let's just go in and change this to be got spelt right or it defaults to black. There's gray. And now I think we have something that looks pretty reasonable. And I can look at this and immediately see that the places where we don't have such high percentages in terms of what we like are that the in-class critiquing could be improved and the readings could be improved. And that's something we'll talk about in class. And with that, I think we're done exploring how to make this stacked bar chart. It is something that takes a little bit of effort, but of course I think it's easier than doing this in Excel personally. And at the end, you get this very cleanly, well-aligned and organized chart that can show you the results of a survey relatively straightforward. And so with that, Hopefully now you feel like you can go out and make these sort of stacked diverging bar charts as well. And I hope you enjoy doing that and showing people your results.